Oyster and contactless payments. Oyster and contactless payments. Who let someone from Bristol do the announcements? I'm going to start today's episode with a riddle. What has two thumbs and didn't get enough sleep last night? This guy. So I'm working in the city today, right inside central London, and I thought it'd be interesting to vlog. I quite often am working in the city, but it's not always jobs I can film. A lot of time it's high profile clients or people who understandably don't want to be on camera. However, this customer today has said they're happy for me to film. So I thought it'd be quite interesting to show you exactly what it is that I'm doing, because when you're working in a house that's worth a lot more than you're insured for, it changes your perspective on a lot of things. Oh, okay, no worries. <laughs> Sorry, got told off in there, I wasn't allowed to film. So inside this house we've got Control 4 and there's a few issues. So obviously we've got the absolute smart home experts on hand, Chili Electrical. Yeah, I'll meet you inside. Start looking out the neighborhood. Okay, so here we are inside the apartment. So we have the lovely Chili Electrical team here. So I'll show you what we're working on. We're on with this. So this is a Control 4 panel. If you've never seen one before, it is basically a home automation system. And what it can do is it can pull, if you've got IP ready home products, whether it be air handling or blinds, lights, anything you can think of, access control, this will basically pull that and put it into one hub to operate it from. The problem is, all of these are on one breaker, and I think it's only one B-curve breaker, this one down here. So that's not really very ideal, and you're gonna get nuisance tripping. So we've been asked to split that into two. So we're gonna split that circuit in two, so I'll show you how that works and how I'm gonna do that. And then also, we've got this um, BMS system here, which is so ridiculous to squeeze that into such a small place. And I like this. If in doubt, ask. <laughs> okay, I should probably ask because uh, yeah, that is a lot to be squeezed in. You've got the incoming supply coming in here. This is three phase, which would be 400 volts. What it does then is it splits off. So you've got this here, which is the D20, which is going off. And then you've got this supply here going out to do this single phase distribution board because most of this house is just three phase loads. The neutral for that comes out there and goes off to this little chamber here. So I can't actually isolate this board from here i'll have to ice if i want to isolate the top of this main switch i'll have to isolate it from here and i'm not able to isolate this i'll have to go to probably some kind of switchboard or rifle field room somewhere to get to that so they want to fit surge protection what i'll do is i'm going to fit this inside of this board here it's that way around fit um a 63 amp c curve breaker three phase that will come out then to this where I'm gonna just have inside of here the actual surge protection. I'm just trying to think how to mount this. There's not really a very sensible place to do it. So I think what I'll probably do is use these bush and couplers. There's, there's two inputs there, so mount onto it and then find something to pack the back out so I can get a fixing into the back as well. I don't really want all of the, the strain to be just on that top there. So I'll crack on with that quickly. Right, so this is a bit fiddly. Let me explain exactly what it is that go, what, what is going on here. So I've, I've got the enclosure and everything ready down there for surge protection. So while we've got the power for the lights, because there's sort of some other things, I'm gonna take care of this control for. Um, so how it works, these different dimmers, you've got the actual line in here, and this is the actual supply which feeds the dimmer unit itself, and it also feeds line one. Each other one of these corresponds to this terminal here. So line two, corresponds to line two, um, line three corresponds to line three, line four to line four. What we want to do is separate the neutrals um, because I want to put these two dimmers here, these two modules, I'd like to put on its own RCBO um, because at the minute having all of that on there is causing nuisance tripping. And I was hoping it was going to be a nice clean split. In a well-designed panel it would be so that I could just chop it there, that half, that half. It looks like it's not going to be that simple. We'll actually have to manually trace a lot of these out, I think. Yeah, so that is the common down neutral for all of them. So I reckon if I was to split this off, let's say here, this little jumper bar, 
out and move that along one. Pop this out here and pop that along one. That then separates that neutral from this neutral. I really love these kind of fiddly jobs because they, they make you think. I'm gonna leave that out for now. The supply neutral can come into that. I want to label this up as well. We wanna make sure then we separate the lives properly, the line conductors. We just wanna make sure everything that's coming out of here is going to this half. I think it is. I'm gonna get those single cables down now into that board down there. I'm gonna fit the RCBO and just see what happens. If I get a nuisance trip, then I know that I've got a shared or a borrowed neutral somewhere. I'll fit this surge protector and I'll show you how that works as well. So it's important to have this because if you think what that has cost to fit, to protect against surge, because I can't verify whether or not there is a surge protector down upstream where this has been fed from. So just to play it safe and putting this in here, each one of those modules alone is gonna cost so much more than what this surge protector is worth. So fitting one is just an absolute no brainer. If there was a power surge, it's gonna cost so much here in blown equipment. Just fitting some heat shrink onto everything just to verify what it is. But what we've done is we've got a 63 amp C curve breaker coming out of the three phase board. That then feeds this surge protector. These cores are actually colored internally. If you look, they've got blue and all the different various colors, but I'm just using a bit of heat shrink just to make life easier for the next engineer to come. Just check on that connection back there to make sure it's all good. Double check yourself always. You're never too good to make a mistake. Right, let me explain some three-phase theory to you. Uh, I was having this conversation with Ted the other day and I forget that to some people, if you've not done a lot of it, this understandably is quite confusing. What's confusing to, for people is this. If I was to measure between L1 and ground, or phase and ground, I get 242 volts. Between L2, 242 volts. L3, 245 volts. So how comes when I put them together, I'm only getting 415 and I'm not getting 460 or 690 across all the three phases. It comes down to Pythagoras theorem and working with triangles. Um, because you've got three phases on a generator, on a motor, turbine rather, and all three of them are 120 degrees out, if you was to draw that, on a diagram, you'd end up with three triangles. All them times in school when you're thinking, why on earth am I doing trigonometry? Why on earth am I learning this kind of thing? This is never gonna be useful to me. There is a direct application of it. So if you was to have a oscilloscope, right? And you was to have, let's, let's reference this as zero, yeah? You've got each phase alternating an alternating current, yeah? At 50 Hertz. And then if you was to have L2, this is very much not to scale, not accurate, but just to give you a rough idea. This one's gonna be just slightly off. And then another one is gonna be in its half cycle while that's going on. And what that means is, if all of these are alternating between positive and negative voltages, the top of the waveform being 230 volts positive, and the bottom being 230 volts negative, then it's the sum of that that's what you're trying to ascertain. Imagine your, your transformer, yeah? Your three phases, very similar to a motor connection. So the distance between here and here, that length there is going to be 230, yeah? Because we can measure that, we can see that. Between, between that point there and earth, or ground, or neutral, our, our zero point, is going to be 230 volts. And that's the same for all of these lengths. So then if I want to measure the distance between here and here, between my phases, you see now all of a sudden you've got a triangle. And what's uh, Pythagoras theorem? You know what your angle here is. Your angle here is going to be 120 degrees because you've got three sets. So if you have your 120 degrees, you know that length is 230 and that length, then your, you know your A squared and your B squared, so now you need to work out what this is. This is for you to solve in the comments and tell me why the square root of three is, uh, is relevant to this. It's like 1.7 something, something, something. Okay, 1.73 and times that by 230 volts, 
we get our 400 volt figure. I'm hoping I've given you the means and the facilities to start you off yourself to now go and research it and be curious because you don't always know something. You don't know what you don't know, basically. And uh, I always find that one quite interesting, how that relates. And that is the reason why you get 400 volts in three phase, um, in the UK anyways, um, instead of 690. So go do some research, come back to me in the comments below. So I've split this off best I can. We could just temporarily just put it on and see if it trips. I think you're right. I can't see any neutrals going across. I can't, but I'm, I bet, that I, I reckon there's gonna be like one that's in the wrong place. So we've got the, oh, it's got very dark all of a sudden. What are you doing here, Ollie? So we've got a C10 Crabtree RCBO. So the next spare way, we're just gonna put it over here. You see, the thing is, this all looks very nice when you have trunking, except when you're using it to hide that. It's kind of pointless having it, like it's so undersized. How on earth are we going to get cables through that? It's going to be an absolute nightmare. If you're using trunking, please, people, size it bigger than what you need. So it's important with these boards to make sure that it's not just the same brand, but the same type. Because you see the bottom of this breaker here is slightly different and the measurements for it are slightly different as well. So you're gonna find, one, it's not been type tested for the same type of enclosure as that, and two, you're gonna see it just doesn't quite sit straight. So you see there, we've got another one to replace that because it just doesn't quite fit right. And I know that sounds like we're being really fussy, and we are, but in a property this beautiful, you're allowed to be a bit fussy. So the circuit's split off. We've got this jerry-rigged in, just a temporary thing, just to see what comes live, because we're trying to split off these two dimmers from, from these ones here. So right, let's see what trips. Some real sight testing here. Oh, that's a good start. So those three have come live, but it's more of the shared neutrals I'm worried about. That looks fine to me. Do it. Nice. Should we switch all the lights on? Just see if everything comes on as it should. I think, to be fair, it probably would have tripped now even. No, it would have. I mean, I can turn it on from here. Yeah, brilliant. Oh no, maybe that was on. I don't actually know what the states mean here. I imagine light, yeah, the light means it's on. They're all on. They're all on, brilliant. So that's it split. Consider yourself split. So now we'll get that in properly, dress that in neatly. And then that is my two jobs in here. Done for that, that was a nice smile. That was almost as nice as your yeah, <laughs> that's our, my, my two little jobs done in here. And then we've got a driver to swap out inside this cupboard for some LED tape and some little bits and bobs, but that's the main educational ones done. This is so full of all of this madness. Who has stuffed this one for? To the absolute brim. Aha! Aha! I think I'm doing an audio dubbed version of my channel to encourage French and Spanish viewers. In French, it's not aha, uh -huh, it's aha. Uh -huh. In Spanish, it's not aha. Uh -huh. What is it in Spanish, Charlie? Good dead Spanish. Arriba or something, probably. I just realized this isn't how you gain Spanish viewers. This is how you get demonetized and canceled. Never mind. YouTube was stressful anyways. I complain about it and then rather, fi rather than fix it, I just add to it and cover it back up again. That sounds like a good idea. On the scene. Hello. What was that? That's Milwaukee. Oh, you got taken out by a Milwaukee. Cut nothing but heavy duty straight in your brain. <laughs> by my best estimation, it is lunchtime. Um, I've done sort of 50% of, I reckon, of what I need to do here. I've got the surge protection in, um, I've got the cables and stuff in. I had to go to CEF to get a couple bits, which is, let me tell you, not fun when you're in the centre of London. Usually I have my little Milwaukee pack out crate, which I pack with various bits of miscellaneous materials, um, which is a good point actually, because today I have literally just travelled with my Unilite bag, which has got like. I've got like, some M12 tools in there, just like, because they're so light and easy to carry, and the batteries last literally ages. So I've travelled very, very light today, but it's only because I knew exactly what jobs I was doing. If I was a bit less sure, then usually I'd carry a little roller case. Okay, so we're about to go for lunch, but I thought I'd tell you the mission for after lunch, because it's quite an exciting one, okay? So Oliver has done the inspection report here, and you see this messy looking circuit here, this is for an air handling unit, but we have absolutely no idea where that air handling unit is. And before you say, no, it's not that one. 
So there's co two concierges that work here. Um, well, there's many, but there's two that are on the property right now. And they have told us Hello. that it's behind a mirror somewhere. And they don't know exactly what mirror, but they said you need suction pads to remove it. So we've bought suction pads. There's some mirrors here, as you can see. Um, and there are also mirrors inside of here. Not this one, not this one. So it's these mirrors. So I'm like, okay, these do not look like they're gonna move at all, other than for the aspect of being a cupboard. However, this one, that has some promise. So when I shine a torch in that crap just there, I can actually see like a little bit of a gap. So I'm thinking maybe, but it's just weird. Why would you need a D20 for whatever it is that fits in such a small gap there? And I'm like, behind this mirror, sure, maybe, but again, you don't need a suction pad for that. So my guess is, and I'm gonna have to be very careful and calculated in how I try this, but I reckon we suction pad on that middle one and see if it kind of lifts off like on a rail. But that is our mission for after lunch. Now we have the slightly poo inducing task, trying to figure out where this mystery circuit is. This is apparently where this mystery three phase circuit runs to. Behind these units here, these glass mirrors, but I cannot see where they go to. It makes absolutely no sense to me. Believe it or not, I'm not sponsored by Volvic, but I wish it was, because if I was gonna be a drink, I'd be that, because it's, it's just perfect. Ah, absolutely, without a doubt, the best mid-budget liquid on the market. Okay, there's no movement there at all. And that was the last one, I've already tried these. That's been glued on, which you can see silicon all the way around. And this one, there's nothing behind it. No chance that I'm gonna be taking these mirrors off that is gonna to have to go down as non-verifiable, sadly. All right, on to the next problem. Last problem of the day. There's a yeah. steel conduit up here that's not being glanded off correctly, but it's going into an open top trunk in. And it's a double insulated cable, so I'd kind of argue that the, the steel conduit itself is not necessary. It is glanded that end, so I'm gonna get the camera and show you. There you go, you see it is glanded off in there, and then it kind of runs along a bit janky down into the top of that trunking back there and it's 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 being coded i agree it's not ideal to not have a proper thing on it but do you know what <laughs> to actually unwire that and change that behind all of this i don't think it's worth the work so what i'm going to do just to make sure it's definitely good it's already earthed it's already good in that way i've checked is slide that back put a bit of tape around here just to protect it a little bit from the end and then drop that down and that'll be absolutely fine. Good to go. I'm just gonna double check on Tradeify, make sure I've got all my jobs ticked off. I use Tradeify, which obviously is what I use for everything from invoicing to day-to-day, -day, ticking off my job list and everything. Um, and Quotes is a work management software. If you wanna try it, I've got a code below where you can get two weeks for free, no credit card details needed or anything like that, and then a reduced trial after that. So feel free to go check it out. That concludes today's episode. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.